Hoid spotting. There he is. 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 Hi, Internet. I'm Steve, and this is Raffo. So why is the Decroix with Raffo a tank at Miswa the best Cosmere reading order ever? Because everything is connected. And this is exactly how. Spoilers for everything. Elantris, Warbreaker, Mistborn, Stormlight, everything. Only watch this video if you've read the entire Cosmere. Or if you don't care. The Decroix with Trafo a Tank at Miswa, or Definitive Cosmere Reading Order, if you want to read and find out all the things and notice connections in the most satisfying way, roughly follows publication order, while grouping most stories that take place on the same worlds. At the beginning of Brandon's publication journey, when the Cosmere was mostly a behind-the-scenes thing, there were only small and occasional hints as to the larger scope. With each new published book, he could tie things back to previous stories, creating threads that careful readers could follow. Basically, everything builds to the next. The more books you read, the more things you'll notice. Starting with Elantris. Again, Spoilers! Hoyd shows up as a beggar helping Sereni with food distribution in the city, and in the epilogue talking to a skaze. And Naj has an annotation on the map which mentions the Rose Barbarians. The lake near Elantris is actually a shard pool or perpendicularity. The old Elantrian that Raoden and Galadin drop in doesn't just dissolve. Hope of Elantris is basically a deleted scene that ties directly into Elantris. Not much cosmerically significant is happening. The Emperor's soul, Hoid, is in a semi-canonical prologue that I've linked in the description, and is at least canonically mentioned as the Imperial Fool who steals the Moon Scepter. A few nations from Elantris are mentioned, and Shy writes an Aeon Rio where her first painting was. It's the first place we hear of the magic-resistant metal Ralkalest, which is just aluminum. And when Shai is running through the palace, we actually see a Dorethi priest in passing, someone in red armor. Also, this novella has the best explanation for Realmatics until we get to Stormlight. White Sand 1 through 3 has Hoyd in the background multiple times, and he sings a song at the end. This is also the origin of Chrysala, Chris, who writes all of the Ars Arcanums, and is seen multiple times elsewhere in the Cosmere. Also, Bayon is introduced here. A construction foreman known as Trell makes an appearance, and of course, it's where all of the white sand that we see later is from. Not all sand that is white, but all white sand. Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell has shades, and because of Shadows for Silence, we know that silver is significant, but we don't know why yet. The evil in the homeland might be related to ambition, and the star belt mentioned that illuminates the planet instead of a moon is the same astronomical feature as the Red Rip in Mistborn and Taln's Scar in Stormlight. One way we know that everything happens in the same dwarf galaxy. And Threnody is named after something. Mistborn the Final Empire! Allomantic metals do things! We meet Kelsier, Sazed talks about Trellogism, where members worship the stars as the thousand eyes of Trell. We first meet Demo, and see Hoyd as a beggar informant. Also, Kelsier dies. That's important later. Well of Ascension, we meet Felt, the Venture Spy. Hoyd is apparently with the Terrace, and we get more info on Ferukemi. The footprints Vin sees at the well are from Hoyd's previous visit. This is where there's validity in the argument to read Secret History before Era 2, because there is overlap. I just say, you can get that on rereads. In Hero of Ages, if you're paying attention and have read Secret History, you can see lots of Kelsier's meddling, including preventing Vin from meeting Hoyd and talking with Spook in her toe. This is really the first we see of Shardic intervention, too, with both Ruin and Preservation fiddling with stuff. Of course, Sazed ascends and becomes Harmony, who writes some letters to Hoyd in the Stormlight epigraphs. His epigraphs here reference Adenalsium and Realmatic Theory. Spook, of course, becomes the Lord Mistborn. There's oodles and oodles of foreshadowing all through Mistborn, telling you exactly what's going to happen at the end, which is completely disregarded in your first read-through. Going through all of that is another massive series in and of itself, but my absolute favorite is the fact that on page one of Final Empire, it says, They say I will hold the future of the entire world on my arms which points directly to what happens at the very end of Hero of Ages. Brilliant. Genius. I love it. The Eleventh Medal is basically a prequel, but you can see how touched by Ruin both Gemmel and Shesler are. 
Then we get to Era 2, Alloy of Law, which is 341 years after Mistborn Era 1. So important characters are referenced as historical figures, and Marsh actually shows up at the end. Spook's Eastern Street slang has become High Imperial, which is hilarious. Miles is a follower of Trellism, which may or may not be connected to the Trellogism of Era 1. We get the first mentions of Kelsier's surviving death, which, if you haven't read Secret History, you basically just disregard. Wax is descended from Breeze, and lots of other previous noble houses are mentioned. Demo Promenade, Tequil Tower, the Yeoman Wedding Reception, which is potentially between a pair of world hoppers, which Hoyd actually attends. Miles' last words are apparently intentionally similar to death rattles in Stormlight, probably because he was more than normally invested at the moment of death. Oh, also Wayne was apparently reading Watership Down? The short story, Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Altania, is all about a legend of Kelsier transcending death, and says it made it so Kolos are their own species. Shadows for Self. Hoyd shows up as a carriage driver, Harmony speaks directly to Wax for the first time, and Trellium, presumably another god metal, is introduced. The broadsheets are also troves of connections. We've got Sunni pups, Nikki Savage meets some southern scadrians near a perpendicular another snippet of an Alamancer Jack story, and my personal favorite, A Hero for All Ages, the musical. Someone write it. Please. Bands of Mourning. Hoyd gives Wax the unsealed metal mine, and is referenced in the Nikki Savage broadsheet story, which also prominently features Naj with a shade gun, which Alamantic Chromium is able to affect. Hmm. Chris talks with Wax at the party in New Saran, and also has an advert in that same broadsheet, apparently asking after Nightblood? We meet the Southern Scadrians with their masks and flying ships. Wax sort of dies and meets Sazed, who gives an overview of Trell's encroachment on Scadriel. And the red-eyed, fakeless immortal at the end? There's a good chance it's not from Scadriel. Potentially it's a Sfrakis from Cell, evil spirits that can take over the bodies of the living. Mistborn's secret history! Kelsier ain't dead! Golly, this story is connected to everything. Many events of the original trilogy are seen. Kelsier's death, the Lord Ruler's death, Vin finding the well, then the downfall of the world in Hero of Ages, all in our first real venture into the cognitive realm. He gets a thrashing from Hoyd, called Drifter by Kel and Sephandrius by Laris, who then travels through the well and steals a bead of Laracium. After being freed, Kelsier meets Chris and Naj, takes and then loses Naj's silver knife, learns of the southern Scadrians, figures out he can talk to crazy people and steal the souls of objects, and then travels to probably close to interplanetary space to the fortress of the Irie, an organization of pre-Riyadh Elantrians, which means they left Cell at least ten years before Elantris, hundreds of years before the final empire. There, Kel is spotted and suspected of being a Threnody Shade, but the alerter Fabriel they have doesn't go off. He steals their connection juice, and the survivorist doctrine in Era 2 that mentions Kel holding preservation before Vin turns out to be true. When Aeti appears in the Scadrian Cognitive Realm, he wonders if it's Vax, a different planet we know virtually nothing about. The ending is glorious and he and Spook get to experimenting with hemallergy. Gotta find Kelsier a new string, eventually writing the book that Marsh gives to Marisi at the end of Alloy. Then, Sixth of the Dusk. We saw alimantically powered proto-spaceships in Bands of Mourning, hinting at the identity of the ones above. So, yes, my theory was wrong. They're not Rosharan. But also kinda right if you read the excerpt from Kingmaker. Anyway, Aviar are introduced. I guess you could call them colorful chickens. Finally, we get to Warbreaker. Hoyd is the storyteller. He's not using light weaving or actual white sand here. And Lemix's nurse is a terrace woman. Lemix was the original spy from Idris that was poisoned by Denth. I have a theory that she shows up again in Rhythm of War. And then a million things with Stormlight. Seriously, there's as many, if not more, connections connections of everything to Stormlight as there are everything to everything else. What was initially going to be one video has turned into four, maybe five, as the connections are thick in Rhythm of War. Please support me on Patreon if you want to peek at the research I've been doing for these videos. I gotta dig a little deeper. Or even watch rough edits of them early. The next ones are diving fully into Stormlight, so if there's anything you need to catch up on, go read and find out. Where is that Hoyd, the Cosmere's biggest meddler? I don't know, we'll see. Stop.